So a lot of states encourage adults to take kids fishing, which is a great thing. And they have some tips on how to have a successful trip. But what most states lack is kind of a detailed instructional video on how to do that. What rods to buy, how to set up your rig, how to catch fish, what to do if after you catch a fish. So that's what we're going to tackle today. I'm going to show you how to set up a kid's fishing rod and rig it up. And we're going to catch some fish, show you how to take off the fish, all that good stuff. So I've got two brand new Zebco push button combos. These are about $10 each, which considering inflation, I think is a pretty good value. And they aren't just toys, these are functional pieces of fishing equipment and they're just made for little kids. So they're short, um, maybe two and a half, three feet long. I gotta get all these zip ties off first because they have them pretty well strapped on to that cardboard packaging. So these are nice because, well one, they're inexpensive, but they come fully loaded with line. They put on six pound monofilament line, comes pre-spooled, so you don't have to buy line separately, but you will need some um, bobbers and hooks and weights and things like that. And this one even came with a, a casting aid, to practice casting in the backyard. And on the back of it, it's got some knots and a little pictogram showing how to cast. So to tie an improved clinch knot, you wrap the tag end up the main line six, seven times, go through the little loop at the bottom and then out the big loop on the side. All right, I've got the combos out of their packaging. Now we're gonna rig up the rods. First thing I'm gonna do is try to get a little bit of line out. You can do that pushing the button at the bottom or um, backing off that drag a little bit. What you don't want to do is start reeling right now because the line will get sucked up into the reel and it's kind of a hassle to get it back out again. So just resist the urge to do that. So I'm threading the the line up the guides, you want to put it in the middle of the guides. Sometimes it's easy to get it on one of the, the wire frame pieces and not the actual ring of the, of the guide. And I've got some hooks here I brought from home. Uh, these are number six Gamagatsu hooks. One of the mistakes I see people uh, making when they go out to catch panfish is they use hooks that are way too big. Uh, so I would say size 6 on the high end, uh, size 8 or even 10 is probably a better bet. And I'm going to tie an improved clinch knot just like it suggested on the back of the packaging. So I go up the line with the tag end 6-7 times, back through the little loop at the bottom. and then out the big loop on the side. Snugging it up, I wet the line, pull it down tight. You want to leave, when you trim it, you want to leave about a quarter of an inch of tag. You don't want to uh, get too tight when you're trimming the, the remainder of the line off. Now. I like to pull off about a rod's length of line. So for this, they're pretty short rods. That's about two and a half feet. I'm tying a slip knot here. You don't have to do this part. It's just something I do. And then I put the loop of the slip knot underneath the end of the bobber. And I've got a bobber and a hook now. And and what I'm going to do next 
is add some split shots. Now these are tin split shots with a uh, kind of a dog ear on the, the back end of them so you can take them on and off easily. They're removable split shots. They also make these in lead, but I'd say for kids, probably better off with the tin version. It's a little safer for kids and I guess the environment too. So I got a pair of pliers to really set those uh, split shot. And for a big float like that, you want three or four of these split shot. Now they come in different sizes, but you just want enough weight so that the bobber is already on its way down. You want it to float about halfway down. And so I'm going to add three split shot because this is a pretty big float. And then I'm going to see how it floats in the water next to the boat. And if I have to add a couple more split, split shot or take one away, I'll do that. That's before I even start fishing. I want to test to see how that float floats, how that bobber floats. All right, I got two split shot on there. I'm going to add a third because it's a big float. One of them started to slide, so I know I didn't crimp it down hard enough. I'm going to give it another crimp. Now I'm going to see how it floats. Just right next to the boat. That's about how I want it. So I don't have to adjust anything. Now I can add my worm. got a little hook keeper there and I made the length just right so the bobbers in, isn't into the, uh, the tip top guide there. I'm going to set up the blue one next. Same thing I can adjust the drag or I can use that push button at the back to uh, to allow the line to come out freely. You don't want that line to get sucked up into the reel. These guides are a little different. They're kind of uh, like molded plastic with a metal insert. Pretty basic stuff, but um, it's completely functional. I'm going to do the same thing as before. Got a hook. I'm going to tie another improved clinch knot. You can either wrap the line, wrap the tag up the main line, or you can spin it like I'm doing here. Either way works fine. Put the tag into the little loop at the bottom, out the big loop on the side. Started to fight me there. I got to go back out the big loop on the side. Wet it. Snug it up tight. Make sure it's set. And then trim that, that tag end and put it in a bucket to get rid of later. Got another float. This one's a little smaller. Tying another slip knot. The slip knot just helps keep the bobber in one spot. You can also just uh, you can wrap the line around the little hook on the on the bobber two or three times. That works almost as well. Same thing, I'm going to add a couple split shot, but this time that float isn't as big, I'm just going to go with two split shot. I dropped the other one, but that's all right, I'll go get that one in a second.
get it the line in place through the middle of the split shot crimp it down same thing I'm going to test it to see how it floats that's just about perfect that's how you want them you want them floating about in the middle of the bobber straight up and down so that's good now I'm looking around for a hook keeper and the one I see is kind of ahead of the reel which means there's not enough space to, uh, to put it up so that's going to be the rod I fished with first just because I couldn't find a handy place to put the hook all right, you can use all kinds of stuff to bait the hook, but I'm going to be using worms today. And you can get worms, I mean around me you can get worms at gas stations, at a local bait and tackle shop. Um, but a lot of people don't have those things near them, or their gas station doesn't carry worms. Uh, so I got these worms at Walmart. And if you have a Walmart near you, it's a good bet they have some live bait. These are European night crawlers. Uh, sometimes they call them red worms. Um, I've seen them called trout worms. What you don't want is big giant worms. And that's because uh, the fish we're fishing for are small fish with small mouths. So if you put a big hunking piece of bait on a, on a big hook, the fish will pull down the bobber but not really get the hook in their mouth and so you'll constantly be missing fish if you fish with hooks that are too big or bait that's too big so you want small hooks size 6 8 10 something like that and smaller bait so trout worms work great red worms compost worms garden worms um, whatever kind of bait that you like that works in your area but I just recommend uh, something on the smaller side and you'll get better hookups, and have more fun, more smiles, all that stuff. All right, we've got ourselves all rigged up. Where to fish? So I'm in a small pond right now, and those are pretty good places to start. They tend to have a lot of fish, and you should have some good success. Now I'm in a boat today. And that's because I don't really know where the fish are here. They could be shallow. They could be deep. Um, and so there are advantages to having a boat. You can move around. You can try different spots on the pond or the lake. But if you don't have a boat, um, it seems like very small children, little kids, prefer being on shore to being on a boat. So it actually might work out a little better to be on shore if you have good shore access and you know you can catch fish from shore. There are pros and cons to both. Sometimes kids think of small boats as like a water prison. You know, they're kind of stuck there. They can't go anywhere. It's almost like time out or something. But on shore, they can play with sticks. They can play with rocks. They can play in the water. So there's pros and cons to both. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start fishing fairly shallow. And right away I get some action but the fish let go. I wasn't really prepared. That's okay. We'll get the next one. So as I was saying, I'm going to start fairly shallow, and if I don't have a lot of action shallow, I'm going to move out deep. That's generally my game plan for all kinds of fishing. If I can find them shallow, I stay shallow. If not, I move out deep. And you can break down a small pond like this pretty quickly just using that strategy. All right, let's talk about casting. So casting is sort of like playing ball with your kids. You don't want to throw too hard. And if you can picture throwing a baseball, you want to release the ball at the top of the arc. 
And if you hold on to the ball too long, you throw it into the dirt. And if you release it too early, it goes straight up in the air and lands on your head. And it's a similar thing with uh, these push button spin cast reels is you want to press the button when you're ready to cast and then release the button at the top of the arc, almost like you would throwing a baseball. And you don't want to put too much into it. They kind of work better if it's just sort of an easy, smooth motion. So there's a little bit of timing involved, but just like throwing a ball, uh, most people pick up on the timing pretty quickly. And then, you know, you're set for life. All right, I'm going to show you the cast again. Press the button, nice and easy. Let go at the top of the arc. Now we're going to slow the boat, boat down, first of all. But I was going to say, uh, reel in some of the, the line, because the bobber's already down. And when I set the hook, it's not like um, some other kinds of fishing where you really have to, to stick them. Basically, you just reel set them. You just start reeling. You don't have to swing on them or anything. Most of these little hooks have fine wire and they're pretty sharp. And you just reel and reel into the fish and keep reeling and keep that line tight. And once the fish comes to the boat, uh, they're pretty spiky little things. So there's the dorsal fin, which is pretty spiky. The gill plates are pretty spiky. So you want to kind of handle them with care and then release them back into the water. Fish rag, sometimes it's helpful too. You just missed one there. Now I'm going to reel into the fish and just keep reeling. The drag on these is pretty light. Even on the max setting, I have the drag all the way up to the max setting. That's the plus sign on the drag dial. And it's still not locked down. So what that means is if you were going to try to catch some really big fish, like uh, carp, um, these rod combos would not be the tool for that job. You would just, it would take forever to get them in because the drag is just so, so loose. Uh, the other thing is that the gear ratio on these rod combos is slow. That means you have to really crank that handle to get the line coming in quickly. And that's fine for panfish, but for other fish, it would make it hard to catch up to them if they were fast. Nice little bluegill. Off she goes. Same thing, I'm just reeling into the fish. I'm cranking pretty fast just to keep that line tight. If you let the line get loose, there's a good chance they can spit the hook. Another thing about those hooks, um, I like what the ones with a, a longer shank. These happen to be Nico hooks, Neko hooks. Uh, Aberdeen hooks also work well, but that's for two reasons. One, I can thread the worm on there. There's plenty of space on that hook for the worm, but also I can uh, I can use the longer shank of the hook to help me get the hook out of the fish's mouth. Now all these fish I can just easily release with my hands, but uh, it's a good idea to bring some pliers or forceps or some sort of hook disgorging tool if the fish get it deep. Those side cutters I was using earlier to get the rods out of the package, those are also handy if, um, if there's a hook that gets into you or your kids. You can just cut the hook and it'll slide right out the other way. This is kind of a nice bluegill. It's got a big head on him. A 
Look at that thing. See you later. All right, I just saw a fish pop up a little to my right. I'm always looking for little dimples on the water or fish rising. So I'm going to reel in. I'm going to push that button down, release at the top of the arc, point the rod where I want to cast, and send it. As soon as that bobber goes down, start reeling, and I reel set them. I like to be a little early on the on reeling it in because I don't want them to get gut hooked. Not a single fish that I was fishing for today was gut hooked. They're all hooked in the outside of the mouth. Just makes for an easy release. Nice and clean. Not hurting the fish. And they swim off strong. Okay, I picked up the uh, the red rod, which was the dock demon, just to see if it worked about the same. As far as I can tell, the, the rod feels about the same. The innards of the reel feel about the same. I think the blue rod was maybe a little smoother. That could have been my imagination. Seems like the, the dock demon's a little noisier when I'm reeling it. That handle is kind of small. It's made for kids, little kids, so it's probably sized appropriately for, appropriately for them. For me, it was a little hard to grab a hold of that little tiny handle. The handle on the blue rod uh, was a little thicker and easier for me to hold. And another little bluegill. The dock demon has a, a two-piece design. So even though it comes as a combo, you can unscrew the foregrip on the rod and get that reel out of there. So if something did happen to the reel or you wanted to upgrade it, you could just swap out the reel. The other one is a one-piece combo. Has some advantages though. The blue one, uh, the whole thing floats. So if Somehow the rod and reel ended up in the water. It's supposed to float. I didn't actually test that, but I believe them. The handle looks like it's filled with air. Casting wise, they seem about the same. Drag seems about the same. They come with the same line, six pound Zebco monofilament. I think for the at the ten dollar price point, these are pretty good value. You just want to bring your kids fishing and catch some fish, or or maybe their grandkids, or maybe their your nieces or little cousins or something, nephews, whatever. There's another little bluegill. So for both of these combos, I used one worm each. And I I caught I don't know how many fish on just two worms. There we go. Bobber down. Reel set into them. Keep them coming to the boat. Steady pressure. Hook comes out nice and easy. And he goes on his way. So yeah, it's getting towards that time of day where I need to head home. But that little dock demon combo worked out pretty well. I also like that hook holder underneath the reel. That was kind of handy. And the blue one, which was the Zebco Splash, that also worked very well. I had to take the bobber off to get the uh, 
the hook into that hook keeper so there's enough space there. But that's not a big deal. I had a little piece of worm left on that hook. I'm getting rid of it. And that hook slides into that little hook keeper there. Tighten it down and it's ready for next time. So I hope this video was helpful. I'm gonna make my way back to the ramp now. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya!